Okay, so Sperner's theorem says that, as we know, the largest anti-chain in the power set of 1 up to n, so this is just a recap from the first lecture, is n choose n over 2. Um, today what we're going to do, so as we saw before, we proved Sperner's theorem using symmetric chain decompositions. Um, what we're actually going to do now is give actually an easier proof. So one thing about, I mean, there's advantages and disadvantages to any proof. Right? This has the advantage, first of all, that it's easier. Um, it'll actually also imply a stronger result. But the kind of downside is that it doesn't, uh, there's certain generalizations like to the little word offer problem that you don't get from this proof. So that's the kind of value in showing you both proofs. Okay, so this is known as the Lim theorem or LYM theorem, proved by uh, Lubel, uh, Yamamoto, Meshulkin, and also Bolabosh, although his name, his initial didn't make it into the name, unfortunately. Um, some people do call it LYMB, but I would say that the majority probably call it LYM or LIM. So the theorem says that if A is an antichain, then the sum, so this is going to be stronger than Sperner's theorem, and we'll show that, that it's stronger later. So the sum from z k equals 0 to k equals n of the size of A, or sorry, A um, intersect the sets of size k. So this is just this numerator, so um, yeah, and then the denominator is just n choose k. So this numerator is just counting the sets in A that have size k. Uh, so this is at most 1. So how do you interpret this? So what is this quantity inside the sum for a, a given k? Well, for a given k, this is kind of like, if you think about it, so it's the number of sets of size k that are in it, divided by the number of sets of size k that exist in the whole universe, right? It's n choose k. So this is like the percentage you can think of, the percentage of, you know, the sets of size k that happen to be in a. So that are in a. Um, not, not quite the, not actually the largest one. So you mean, or do you mean, oh, go, go ahead, yeah. That will, so that, that will be a case that achieves equality. So if you take uh, n choose, you know, the, all the sets of size n over 2, that'll work. But actually, it's kind of weird, right? If you look at this, actually, if you take all the sets of size k for any k, um, that's going to be an anti-chain, and that's going to also satisfy equality. So if I say take all the sets of size 1, for example, it, it's actually going to give you 1 over 1 on the, on the or sorry, n over n on the left side, and it's going to equal one. So, so actually, that's that's a nice thing here that this is tight for a lot of different um, examples. Yeah. And actually, I think it probably though it is only tight probably pretty much when you do take a whole like all the sets of size k for some k probably. But any other questions or is this clear what this is saying? Okay. Um, right. So let's give a proof. And this is so that I'm gonna this is this is technically the same proof as it is in the notes, but. For the lecture, I thought I would just explain it in a different way. Um, so then you have kind of two ways of thinking of it, but it really um, is the same proof in some sense. Um, okay, just a little bit of terminology. So a permutation of n, um, or yeah, a permutation of n of length n perhaps, but let's just say all permutations for the sake of this lecture are of length n. Uh, so a permutation of 1 up to n is a sequence of length n containing every element exactly once. Now, can anyone maybe remember from, I don't know, 222 or something, you know, how many permutations are there of 1 up to n? Oh, yeah, okay, so this is something people remember. Good. n factorial. Okay, now here's a variation of that, or whatever, I don't know. Um, so take a subset A of 1 up to n. How many permutations of n start with the elements of A in any order? So, so they, yeah, the first elements are all the ones from A, or all from A. Any guesses on that? Is it clear what I mean by that? Well, that's if, uh, that would be, that would be right, so n minus the cardinality of A factorial, that's part of it. So, yeah, maybe it's, these things are always kind of ambiguous when I, you know, what do I mean by starting with A? I don't mean starting with A in order. I mean, yeah, starting with the elements of A in any kind of possible order. So, right, so it's, so there was one answer in the chat, which is 
the one I'm looking for, so that's a factorial times n minus a factorial. Right, because there's a ways to permute the things in a, and then you write down that permutation, and then n minus way a, a ways to permute the rest, write that down, and that's um, by the rule of product or whatever, this is the, the right number. Okay, so now um, we haven't said anything about antichains. We're just talking about permutations so far. So let's take an antichain. So curly A is an antichain, and I pick two elements, A and B, which are different. So A is not the same as B. Um, here's the key observation. No permutation of 1 up to n can start um, with both, uh, well, with both A and B, if that makes any sense. Um, how to explain that? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, good question. So just the numbers from 1 to n. Yeah. So, um, meaning like if I, if I take, if I give it, have a given permutation, and if I look at the first elements, if I keep saying, well, here's, here's actually a good picture of this here. So, so these points here, these dots represent numbers of the permutation. So like this, where I say start here, that's the first number of the permutation. And over here is the end of the permutation. So I, don't, I didn't know what to write, so I just put dots. But the, each of these dots is a number from 1 to n. And this is a permutation. Suppose that the permutation starts with a, meaning the first cardinality, you know, the first uh, this many that I'm drawing, that many. <laughs> Um, elements are all from A. If also, if it's also the case that the first, you know, size of B elements are from B, then B would be contained in A, or vice versa, right? Whichever one's bigger would contain the other one, because if you look at it, you know, um, right? That's this is in B, but it's also in A. In B, also A. B, also A. B, also A. And it starts with B, so there's no other elements of B, so B is a subset of A. Does that make sense? So no permutation. Yeah, so if it did, then you'd either have A a subset of B or B a subset of A. Does that make sense? So here I'm trying to use this anti-chain condition. Okay, so let's put all of these things together. So what did we say? We said the number of permutations is n factorial. So that's where I'm starting. n factorial equals the number of permutation, per permutations of n. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum over all... So I'm, I'm going to... I claim that this... We'll justify, I'll write this and then we'll justify this inequality. But yeah, so I'm going to sum over all A and A and take the number of permutations starting with A. With A. Now why is this at most the number of permutations? It's because of this fact we just noticed that if I have two different elements of A, there can be no permutation that starts with both of them. So the Meaning, what I mean is, um, each permutation of 1 up to n is counted, counted at most once by this sum. And over here, you know, obviously, this is just the number of permutations, so each permutation is counted exactly once. Okay, and this thing is, uh, this thing here is, you know, using the previous slide, the result from the previous slide. Does that make sense? And the last bit is, how many permutations start with A? Well, we already computed that. It's A factorial, N minus A factorial, where when I say A, I mean the size of A. So, what I want to do is just divide both sides by n factorial, okay? Oh, and this is the sum over all a in curly a, like the previous one. Oh, is, are people generally with me here? Okay, cool. And then, yeah, so we, we divide by n factorial. So this won't quite look like the, the way we, um, so if you divide by n factorial, you just get a n curly a, size of a factorial n minus a n minus size of a factorial over n factorial which is i mean 
this is uh, um, this is one over n choose the size of a. Um, and I mean, if we we can write this sum a different way, right? We can just say so if if the size of a is k, like we can just break this sum up in terms of how many sets of each size we have. So this is indeed, if you take uh, k equals zero up to n, the number of sets of size a, or sorry, of size k, that are in a divided by n choose k. So this is this equality, this last equality is just by collecting up terms in some sense. So collecting up terms where a is the size of a is k. And that's what we wanted to prove. So we have one on on the left side we have one. One is at least the thing we wanted to be less than one. So is that clear? Okay. Um, so this uh, this now connects back to um, a comment that was earlier, kind of. Maybe not not completely, but um, why does this impl imply Sperner's theorem? Well, because we know that the what what is the biggest uh, binomial coefficient? It's like if you fix n n choose k is always at most, um, so n choose k is at most n choose n over 2. As we know, and so if I use that in this inequality here, what I end up, so I'm going to use that on the, the denominator. So the denominator is always at most n choose n over 2. So I just replace the denominator by that to get a smaller number. So notice I'm not changing the numerator, but only changing the de denominator. And this is a valid inequality because of the green thing up there. But then now the denominator doesn't depend on k. So actually if you, and the top is just counting the sets of size k over all k. If you add them all up, all you get is the size of a over n choose n over 2. And if you multiply out, you get Sperner's theorem. So the size of a is less than <coughs> or equal to n choose n over 2. Yeah. So, yeah, so this was uh, some notation from before. So if I if I write, so square brackets n means the numbers 1 up to n, the set, that set. Um, that set, like a set choose k, what I mean by that is it's all the subsets of that set of size k. So it's a, so n, you know, square brackets n choose k is the collection of all subsets of 1 up to n of size k. Yeah. So this intersection, A intersection, that thing, is just all the sets in A that have size K, if that makes sense. Yeah.